to it. Um, let's begin with Harvey. Let's start with you, Harvey. Um, so you worked with Rob uh, from his start. Uh, what were the first things Rob told or impressed you when you met him as Modoc's new GM? And what was the last thing you talked to him about? Yeah. Well, thank you, and uh, you know, thank you for being on this, this wonderful panel with you know, not only colleagues, but really good friends, first of all. And thank you, Don, for taking the time to really honor, but per your question, you know, <clears throat> when you're staff and you start to see who the potential board's gonna pick as an next GM, you get a little nervous because you don't know what it is. And then you start hearing that they might pick someone from the outside and you hear that uh, Rob Hunter's come from the city of Atlanta. And you really don't know them. Uh, so when I first met him, uh, we had breakfast and uh, he would just sit there and he would look at you while you're, while you're talking and you didn't know whether he really approved or disapproved or what his thoughts were. So he would have these long pauses. Um, but what I found most impressionable early on was his intellect, his intrigue, especially in the metropolitan side. Um, he was fascinated that metropolitan through its history because just like Larry Dick said that he studied quite a bit of the history of Met. And I think as you're well familiar, he knew the components of it, but not only that, he was so intrigued with the evolution of Metropolitan, how through different phases of different years, through some of the challenges, how Metropolitan would evolve, um, how it adapt. Um, and I think that was something that he found so interesting that you had all these different agencies with different wants, different needs, different backgrounds to come together and still have a common vision, a common goal, and just the collection of that. It's, it, is, it is fascinating to see that. It's fascinating to see what Metropolitan does. And do. From the MODOC standpoint, very similar in that standpoint where you have a collection of agencies in North County and South County that have different perspective, different needs, and being able to have MODOC <coughs> provide that opportunity for planning and leadership um, when need be and, and trying to collect those different opinions and thoughts. So he had a, a great intellect. He had a great ability to comprehend things in such a quick manner. I was so fascinated by his ability to, to, to see water in, in, a, in, a, in a unique way, but he understood California water, which was, which was it's difficult in itself. Um, but he really believed in his convictions he would take the input from people. And although he was very quiet, he had a great knack of, of, of clearing the, 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 the noise and be able to concentrate on the key issues. And I was always impressed by this. And his political intellect was, was pretty high. Uh, I, I, I was always fascinated that he truly understood the political landscape, knew how to navigate through it, um, but still at the same time was a inherent um, optimistic, realistic person. He knew the, the he knew the realism of, of issues, but he was so optimistic about them as well. So, so what was the last conversation you had with him about work? <laughs> the last conversation was actually during your uh, installation, and he actually called me, um, and he said, how are things going? He said, did the, did the event go well? And I said, it was. And I said, he, he goes, what's the interesting? I said, seen so many old friends, and I think you brought so many people from my old past, from Central Basin, and, um, and he simply indicated that he hoped everything was good. He checked staff, definitely on staff. That's one thing he always wanted to make sure that staff was taken care of, and if there was any uh, important issues. But he said, um, frankly, right at the end, um, you know, go, go back, have a good time, enjoy it, tell Adon, you know, congratulations for me. So it, it, was, it, was, it was very nice, that, that, that last moment. Well, thank you. Yeah. So let's jump over to David Peterson, who's a member agency manager. From your discussions with Rob, please walk us through the evolution of his thinking from the water fix, two tunnels, to the Delta Conveyance Project, one tunnel, and its assurances of modernization of the state water project. Um, what was that conversation like when you guys were debating in member agency manager caucuses and meetings? So I have a lot of fond memories of, of working with Rob, and I'll just say to start, um, 
you know, kind of thinking of some of the comments that um, Harvey made is something about Rob is, you know, he didn't come from California. He came from out of state, but he learned California water really, really fast. And, you know, I had been, we'd been working in the water business already in California for a long time. And, you know, here comes this new GM and he knew California water like immediately. And, you know, the thing, the Bay Delta, in my opinion, is one of the most complex and challenging things in California water, maybe next to the Colorado River. And Rob just knew it inside and out. And so, you know, a lot of us have, um, you know, somewhat of a superficial understanding. Rob knew the details, he knew the why, he knew all of the key elements. And, you know, I did see an evolution of thinking um, with Rob and I learned a lot from Rob about the Bay Delta and, you know, at the time it was BDCP, then it was um, California Water Fix, now Delta Conveyance. But just a couple things, and, and Rob was an ardent supporter of Delta Conveyance, BDC, from the very beginning, always. Um, and, you know, the thing about Rob is he looked at his agency, MODOC, and he looked at the importance of the project for MODOC and the benefits, but he looked beyond that too. He was always looking at the health of the Bay Delta and the importance of the co-equal goals in the Delta Reform Act. So Rob had like a really big picture, you know, view of the world. He didn't just look at what, what's in it for, you know, MODOC or what's in it for Orange County. He realized that the Delta needed um, repair and that the current situation was not sustainable. And, and he would say that frequently. The other thing that I think Rob um, realized is the, the challenge in financing the project. And you know, he would talk about that and he followed, in fact, in our meetings, he would always say, you know, you know so-and-so is in, so-and-so is out. You know? And we would know, you know, and probably Harvey, you probably knew on a daily basis, you knew when the decisions were being made. And he could see, you know, especially when the federal contractors, um, you know, the need for the, the CVP contractors to join, he was already looking ahead and saying, we've got, you know, some challenges. So I really, that's what I admire about Rob is he had a depth of understanding of California water that was beyond, you know, I would say beyond most of us. And he really dug into things and he looked at the big picture. Um, and, uh, and I think that is something that all of us really got from him. He helped to educate us on, um, on the importance of the Delta. So, so do any of you have any memory of when, you know, Metropolitan approved the single tunnel and then, um, you know, a little while after we came back and did the, the what was the conversation with him like so when, I was when that decision I was, was made to go for it? I was with Rob when that happened and it just was happenstance and I'm not really sure why we were at a meeting together and it just happened and the, the, um, the news came out and um, I remember um, being with Rob and Rob was, um, I'm trying to think of the right word, he was, he was upset and he was um, concerned and I think, you know, I think about why and I think it was because he knew that the importance of receiving, getting the full benefit of the project and that the capacity of the project was important in order to achieve the full benefit. And, um, and also the economics, the economics of the project were important as well. So I think Rob knew that and he was concerned about it. And um, I do remember that reaction. I knew he felt strongly about it. Um, and uh, I knew that it also was very important to him. Uh, Harvey or Robert, do you guys have any memories of that, 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 that juncture, that change in plans? Yeah, I, I think Dave described it pretty well. You know, he wasn't happy. I think, for example, your, your, your knowledge in history, Don, is that you don't get opportunities like a big decision like this unless you have the political alignment, the, the, the support from the agencies, um, and we were, you know, seeing exactly who was in, who was out, um, the economics. And when you have that opportunity with the governor at that time was trying to support it, and then all the time things don't turn out exactly, it's, it's, it's you're saying, well, we're going back to the drawing board again. And then, at the, and then you are stepping back and having to recalibrate everything. And we know the work that's effort into it. Um, and you also know the value of what you can potentially get from it. So that those things were important. It's like, when are we going to go back and do this again? He believed in the right scientists, science and the right um, activity, the benefits, not just all water supply, but the co-equal goals that were so important. So 
you know, when you have those lined up and then it doesn't come through, yeah, it can be frustrating. So I think that's what he was, because he saw the amount of work that people went into doing it. Okay, let's jump to Adele. So Adele, uh, coming into the organization, one of your goals was to unite varied perspectives. In your interactions with Rob, how did you come to understand his perspective? And what did you learn from him? Uh, you know, he, he was not on your side when you were running. Sure. And so tell us, a, tell us about that. We have a lot in common. We have the, the looks, you know, we share that. <laughs> you're, I think you're a little better looking. Yeah, I don't know. Um, we all love to eat. We both love to eat and uh, <laughs> got to know each other well. Uh, you know, you know, Rob, you know, uh, he felt that I'm, I'm a person that's going to come and shy away from the focus on import water and, and the Bay Delta. And, and he was scared from one water. He was like scaring the heck out of him. He didn't know what one water is. Am I, is this like a new thing I'm trying to uh, put out there? And, and you know, uh, I reached out to him and we went on ahead. A number of meals, breakfast. He loves breakfast. We went. There's a place down like a Hawaiian pancake thing, and he loved. So we we went there and we would talk. And I had to explain to him what one water was all about. And it's all inclusive. It's all about building resiliency. About looking at all the pieces and putting it together. But he wanted to know where I stand on on the on the tunnel. I mean, that's that was for him as a priority. And I and and I remember one day is. Uh, uh, he uh, asked me, Adon, after you uh, were elected, I heard that you said at the board that this tunnel is not going to be built in 20 years or over. I said, I don't think it was Adele. It was, I think, Adon. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure you got it straight. I didn't say that. Adon said it. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that was, okay. All right. so it wasn't you, right? I said, no, but I, I kind of, we built a relationship. We, we got to know each other well. Uh, you know, we, we, we go way back. I mean, when he was in Atlanta, I was working on the sewer system in L.A., and I was uh, a board member in Nakwa, and he was always coming to Nakwa. So we knew each other well. But I think he really uh, wanted to do the right thing. And how he got to know me, and I want to do the right thing. So we, we connected. We talked. We had some issues. We talked about some challenges. Uh, but the only thing I promised him is I'm going to look and take care of the entire organization, entire MET, all member agencies. I want to create an open dialogue. And the first time I think uh, I met him uh, in person was the retreat that we had in uh, Inland Empire. And, uh, and from there, we start getting together and talking. And I think, I'm not sure how long before he passed, we had this conference call. And he looked thin, but he was feisty. Right. He wanted to know what's going on with this. And I'll tell you, when we had the vote on the site's reservoir, I mean, there was a big thing for the board to take action. It took all of us to really think hard about it. When we took action and negotiated and signed the MOU on, on the voluntary agreements and brought it before the board, he would call me and, and tell me, you know, that I appreciated how I was able to bring the board together. And our relationship evolved over time. Uh, but I'll tell you, it's a, it's, it's a lesson for me and a lesson for all of us. Don't judge a book by its cover. Get to know the book. Read the book. Know the person. Sometimes we judge people just because they look like something. I think he may have judged me one way. I may have judged him differently. But when we got together and got to know each other, we're probably the same. We have a lot of similarities. And, and one thing I kind of knew about him, because I wanted to drill more into what drives him. And the thing that gets me is, is his really focus on uh, helping everyone. You know, I talk about you know, serving our community with, one, with no one left behind. He believes in the same thing. When he went to Flint and the issues with Flint, if you talk to him, he will tell you it's not a technical issue, it's not a government failure issue, it's a moral, a, a moral failure for all of us. I mean, that's the person that a lot of time we didn't know. And I got to know him better. We didn't agree on everything. <laughs> we just still. But that's a debate we all have. But we need to continue working together. And I appreciated his counsel. Uh, when issues wasn't working well, he would pick up the phone and call, and leave me a message. I'll call him back, and we'll chat. And I think we're able to really build a very 
uh, a partnership, I think, that really helped us all come together and move us forward. Well, thank you, Adele. As a member agency of MODOC, how did he impress you on that question, and what was his picture of the future? Because it all comes down to serving you. Well, first of all, I really appreciate being on this panel. In fact, if I could take a selfie, I would right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can. You can. <laughs> hey, wait a second. He's, he's one of the most powerful people in Orange County. We should be taking a selfie with him. <laughs> So, but in, in all honesty, when uh, the next phrase was, hey, it's going to honor Rob Hunter, and, you know, I was, I was really close with Rob. I thought, oh, no, these guys don't know that I have allergies when I have to talk about, you know, these kind of situations. And so I, I brought a piece of paper. So you see, see me looking down. I'm getting a little sad there. But, um, uh, you know, other than being a true Dodger fan, what impressed me most about Rob was his dedication and tenaciousness to know both North and South Orange County and Central. And um, I came, I kind of grew up in Anaheim. I see my Anaheim folks out there. And, you know, I know, uh, and, and we weren't a MODOC member agency. Um, us, Santa Ana and Fullerton, uh, we were the three cities. But all, Rob always made a concerted effort to reach out to us and not just do the formalities, but he would put, put in those random phone calls and find out more about us. And um, I really appreciated that. And, and I got to know that Rob, he's one of those guys that always does his homework. He doesn't do it sometimes, he always does his homework. Um, and then when I went to South County in 2015, I got, I got to be a MODOC member agency, which is really cool. I got to go through these lunches. <laughs> I got to <laughs> hobnob with the MODOC agency, the 27 of them. And, you know, same difference. Rob was the guy who was just striving to learn as much as he could so he could provide the very best service on our behalf, whether it was for, for Metropolitan um, or what I call support services. Um, and, and that's what I really um, impressed, impressed me about Rob. The other thing that impressed me was I, I had a chance. I was lucky. I had a lot of good mentors, a lot of these folks in this room. Um, about 12 years ago, I was, I was selected to be the Orange County Water District Groundwater Producers Chairman. Yeah, you know, I, I get up there and I have no idea how to get consensus. It was one of the toughest things I ever had to do with that, those agencies, and we all had common interests. We were all in the groundwater basin. R what Rob had to do at MODOC was orders of magnitude more difficult, and he was able to do it and look very smooth about it. You know, I always remembered him, and Harvey talked about the delays and him thinking about it. That was his strategic nature. He never just spit out something. You know, he, he thought about it, digested it, thought about the political consequences of what he was going to say, and then it came out. And I really admired that about him. I learned that quite a bit from him about that. And even tough issues like the OC reliability study, that's a tough issue. You have 30-something voices trying to dictate where the roadmap is going to go for Orange County in terms of source water reliability um, and system reliability. And, and Rob did that, and he kept pushing for a consensus. Um, in terms of his picture for the future, uh, you know, I, I broke it up to three parts. One is the innovative thinking that Rob would want, want Met to keep moving forward on. And, you know, he even brought up some, some projects like Doheny Desal, and that's how I I got to be in the picture with Rob and Metropolitan, I mean, with MODOC and, and others. Um, he also was very concerned about water reliability planning for Orange County. And I know there were those that, that thought maybe he wasn't in his right boundary, but he cared so much, you know, and he wanted to do the right thing for Orange County. Um, he, <laughs> he led the OC reliability study, and he even, you know, after Doheny Ocean Desal came, came on as a core activity or a core project, uh, indirect potable reuse, uh, indirect potable reuse uh, in the county. Uh, Rob then went a little, a little bit further, and this tells you about his tenaciousness, and uh, even took an item forward that, that considered all of the Orange County paying for Doheny Ocean Desal, and that became the best soap opera during the, the COVID period. So, um, but that tells you about his tenaciousness. And then the last is his value of MODOC as a support services agency. And the reason why I bring that up is I've always said the guys, in, in, the guys and girls in the field, field operations and customer service are, are stars out there. They're the ones making things happen. And the rest of us, including myself, are support services to make sure they have the resources uh, to do their job. Rob did the same thing on the MODOC level where 
um, <clears throat> he had a really, or he has a really solid group of staff that, um, and, and himself, Harvey and, and others, Melissa and others that really push the envelope in Metropolitan and make sure that not only Orange County's interests are, are looked out for, but others too. You know, what makes sense for the general whole. Um, legislative activities, they've helped us, you know, push forward, uh, design, build, operate legislation um, and keep state monies. Um, uh, on, on the conservation front, they've helped us with quite a bit, including the uh, being our advisor and helping us with the flu meter program is a good uh, communications uh, and education. They've been very helpful with the school programs and emergency response, which hit us locally with the coastal fire. And they were very uh, important to us as well. So he felt that and he really led that effort moving forward. So, wow. Thank you. So um, MWD is about to go into the most significant planning and rate process in the last 25 years. Uh, this is a question to all of you. What would Rob want to see come out of that process? Uh, what would be the regional and local impacts of his proposals? Let's start with David Peterson. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big question. So Use you know, your imagination. I had a couple of thoughts that just came up as you were all talking. And you know, one thing, one thing the, the last thing I remember about working with Rob, and it was actually um, at a member agency managers meeting, we were talking about um, some of the challenges we were facing in this current drought, and you know, Las Virgenes, it's no secret, faced some really significant challenges, as did the six agencies in the state water project dependent areas. And Adele and I were just talking about this this morning. And what I remember what Rob said, and you know, all of us were kind of always in the manager's meeting wanting to see where our fellow managers are. And Rob's like, I, I feel like he stood up and he said, he said that we need to support our fellow member agencies. This is a moral imperative. And it was like, it felt so um, heartwarming. Like it just, we were having a really hard time during the drought and it just felt like, it sort of felt like the cavalry was there. there somebody was supporting us. Not, not that we didn't feel support, we did, but it was a time where, where we could use that extra support. And that was the way Rob is. And I think, you know, I think about Rob really believed in regional benefit and always was thinking about the, region, the greater regional benefit. And you know, in our managers meetings, all of us, we all have these creative ideas and different programs and, and proposals, and we pitch them to each other. And they're not all good ideas. <laughs> sometimes they are, but sometimes they benefit maybe just one or, or several of us. And Rob was always good at really getting to the heart of the issue and really saying, what is the, what is the regional benefit? What's the benefit to the entire metropolitan family? And you know, you would when he would ask that question, you'd quickly know that like you 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 ought to have a good answer. And if you didn't have a good answer, it wasn't likely that that was going to be a program that was going to get broad support. So I think that's the most important thing that I remember is Rob looked at the big picture. He looked at the benefit for the whole. And in fact, I think Harvey and I were talking. He kind of also realized we were only as strong as our weakest link. And so that, and that's why he said that it was a moral imperative. He said, we've got to support our fellow member agencies because we are a collective. And if one of our agencies is not doing well, then we need to come and support them. And uh, that really stuck with me and um, really um, came at the perfect time for us at Las Virgenes. Har Harvey, what do you think that it, would he been? Well, he stole that line from you, you know, the weakest link. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you credit for Thank that. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny you bring that, that up because um, I was asked to, to, to go through a lot of his files. And, you know, it was, it was a, a couple nights after his passing, so I had to go through all his notes and everything. And one of the things that, that he was um, listing out of certain med activities, and I was determining whether or not we're going to keep them or not. But to your question, what I find he almost outlined pretty well was, with this retreat, he would say, you know, there needs to be a goal of identifying these issues. I mean, really identifying these issues, which I think, you know, you're, you're trying to outline and, and, and definitely staff is doing it. But, but then after that, prioritize them, you know, define them, what do we go first? There's so many challenges you can identify, but the question is, how do you tackle them? And I think Rob would say, well, you know, which one? Break that down. And then lastly, um, you know, identifying, how we develop a consensus on them. And, and, and I commend you and I commend Adele for, for, for striving to do that. You know, there, there does appear to, to be a lot of 
um, weight and a lot of expectations as retreat, and I really do hope that. But I think what Rob would truly want is, is, is consensus that we can establish to not only identify them, but prioritize them and, and look to staff to be able to tackle them so we can get things going. A roadmap that really achieves these things, I, I, I can tell you that's exactly what he would want to see out of it. And, I'm, and I think he would be very proud of what you guys have outlined because I think that's exactly what he would want. So Adele, Rob is up in the sky and he's calling you. Yeah. And uh, what's he telling you? Yeah, he, he's saying, week? get that one water plan done. <laughs> <laughs> he would, he would, he would. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, think, I think he wants to ensure resilience and reliability across our region. But in, and he wants the Delta Conveyance as number one. So, <laughs> so we prioritize everything after number one. Um, <laughs> and, and, no, but he's going to see the big picture. And, and I know he's going to be happy that finally we're all together building the roadmap, really coming together to build this future. And I wish he's, he would be there with us. I know he'll be there with us in spirit. He, he really wants, I mean, I saw something in him that kind of, I was trying to think hard is why is Rob pushing hard to support the state water dependent areas? And he was an outspoken person for, you know, and, and, I, and I thought, uh, you know, Dave Peterson is the one who keeps telling him to echo that voice. Uh, <laughs> but no, he really believed in it. So I, I think to me what that told me that he cares for everyone. When I went down to uh, uh, down to South Orange County to look at the the diesel plant, Rick, and he was there, and right? we talked about how because he saw something different in Metropolitan that he thought would not happen because we are looking to take care of everyone with no one left behind. Uh, I think the question that he would ask is how are we going to pay for this. Uh, that's one I think he's going to really, and I think we're going to have to have that discussion. And, you know, he, he really wants to make sure that we have a fair, sustainable way of paying for these things. So he was going to probably ask after prioritizing how we're going to pay for this. But I think he'll be proud that we all are coming together, uh, putting our agency boundaries out the door and checking our regional hat in and working together to build this resilient future that we can build, so uh, I so, think he'll be proud. So Rick, what's your phone call like? I'm sorry? What's your phone call from Rob Hunter like? He's calling um, you, after, you know, we're yeah. going into this retreat, he's gonna tell you something. Yeah, you know, Rob would tell me the same thing as Adele, go get that diesel project moving. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, I'll, I'll tell you, um, Rob showed up at the Coastal Commission hearing and I don't know if everybody knows this, but this was in October. And he was very sick, you can imagine. Very, very sick. And he came in there, and I saw Rob. I said, oh, thank you for coming down. And, and I said, you know, how'd you get down here? He said, oh, I drove. So you drove from Orange County to San Diego two hours to support us in this Coastal Commission hearing. And I'm thinking, would I do that? Well, probably not. <laughs> But that's the kind of spirit he had and, and that follow through that Rob had. So, um, you know, I, I liken it to, everybody knows I like to use baseball analogies in there. So I, I liken it to the, um, and Rob being a Dodger fan, the 1988 World Series in October, about 34 years before that uh, Coastal Commission hearing and uh, bottom of the ninth, two outs, and the strategic part Rob would like was the man, they, Tommy Lasorda put a guy in the uh, uh, batting circle and he was just a contact hitter. So they just walked him. Hmm. Then he, the, they walked the first batter. So then they put Kirk Gibson, did a switcheroo. And Kirk Gibson had <laughs> injured knees, could barely walk up there. And he just took a swing with his arms and he hit it out of the ballpark, and, and, and the rest was history, right? They win the World Series, they win that game. And that's what I liken it to, Rob coming down there and, and that follow through and with you know, all the odds against him to, to follow through with that project and, and see us through the Coastal Commission, and, and he did that. And the amount of admiration I have for that, that man for doing that is, is just more than I can even well, say. Thank you. thank you, Rick. Let's give a big round of applause to the panel. To the channelers of Rob Hunter.
we'd like to open it up for questions. Anybody have observations or questions or Megan? Happy to help facilitate questions, or you're welcome to. Anybody have any questions or comments? We have a question. Right over here. I got a phone call from Rob. <laughs> and it said, this was really nice. But what would really be nice would be if we had the new chairman commit to coming back in second or third quarter and talk about his plans for MET going forward. Something we've been blessed with from previous GMs, and I know Rob would appreciate that commitment if he could get it from y'all. You got it. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? No? Shall I do my closing remarks? Go ahead. Okay, well, so during my swearing in, um, you know, I really wanted to send the message that we needed to put the conflicts of the past behind us, that the world has changed, that we find ourselves in a changed climate and change conditions, and therefore, we need to kind of reset the table uh, to a future uh, that works for all of us in Southern California. So instead of taking an oath of office, well, here's the thing. I found out, I'm not a big party person, and uh, I thought you had to take an oath of office to be chair of the board. So when they organized the swearing-in ceremony, I kind of just like went along with it, and it turned out I really didn't have to do it. Uh, so that kind of just kind of set me free a little bit, and I asked the board to link arms and take an oath because 33 of the 38 directors accepted leadership positions, so it wasn't just on me, it was on all of us. This is um, a poli I would imagine that um, this is a, poly a policy wonk's dream to have a whole session dedicated to policy in your honor. Uh, maybe when it happens to me, this is how I'll be honored. Do unto others as you would have them do unto yourself, because I'm not a religious person. No question, Rob was, consequential, was a consequential leader in this region over the last decade. And I've learned a lot from this panel. Uh, but it's also a remembrance, and I think remembrances are best left with hope. And so in the Christian tradition, and I said I wasn't a religious person, uh, a ritual is shared with all uh, in the congregation, whether you're a member of it or not, uh, that's intended to sow the seeds of, of, I don't think we can call it brotherhood anymore, but that's what they used to call it in the old days, and peace after communion. Uh, so I'd like you all to stand up, please. I want you to turn to somebody next to you, and I want you to offer them the sign of peace. Yep. You do this. I do this in church. Do you really? I haven't done it for a long time. <laughs> So, I, I, did, I, I didn't say church was over. Yeah, that's right. So, I want us to walk out of here with, we're all, this is the water community of Orange County. Uh, but there's also the water community from San Diego, the water community from the San Gabriel Valley, the water community from the Inland Empire, you're all here. And we all need to move together. And I hope that as you leave here, you leave with a greater appreciation for Rob Hunter, and that you also leave with the prayer that we may all be united as we confront the next year of planning. Uh, which will be very consequential planning. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here tonight.
Thank you so much, Adon, and our panelists, Harvey, Adele, Dave, and Rick. And in memory of Rob, I just want to echo and emphasize this message. It's not just the Orange County water community or even the Southern California water community. It's not even the California water com community. It's one water and one earth, and that's all we have. So I encourage you all to take to heart what Adon and team have shared tonight and really think about how we can all work towards one water together. And so with that, I'd like to thank our entire panel. I'd also like to thank all of you for taking time away from your loved ones and your families to join us here in this community tonight. And we'd also like to thank the Weston Hotel and all of the staff who are here tonight. We'd also like to thank our MODOC staff. I know it takes a lot of work to pull off an event like this. And <laughs> as I've heard from many leaders from outside of Orange County, they take what we do as a model and continue to build on it because we set the example and I'm proud of that. So thank you, MODOC. Uh, just a couple quick reminders. If you have your parking ticket, they, they can be validated, so please make sure to get your parking validation ticket. And then last but not least and most importantly, we'd love to share your memories of Rob with his loved ones and his family. So if you would like, there, there is the box in the back to fill a little card out, or you can also email them to publicaffairs at modoc.com. And so with all that, thank you all so much. It is so good to see you all, and we're grateful for our community. Thank Have you. a good night. Thank you. Thank you.